God's Word that I want to share with you today in this Worship at the Cross service is from a book called Peter. It's actually two different books. There was 1 Peter and 2 Peter, and this is 1 Peter. And 1 Peter is going to be an opportunity for us to hear what God has to say to you and me, and it's a very special message. It's a couple different verses. It's verse 5 and then 7 through 8. And I, and I notice on my screen here uh, that I have the wrong passage at the end. It's not Hebrews, but it's going to be the book of 1 Peter. And it says this. It's a little longer. Usually I like to just take one verse, but it's a little longer today. And it says, You also, like living stones, are, are being built into a, a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble. There's a lot there, so why don't we start like this. I have these stones that I brought with me today. Now, a lot of these stones that I use uh, are some from our landscaping. Landscaping would be just some things around our house or maybe around a building. Maybe you've seen that by a sidewalk. But a lot of these stones, when you line them up together, they make a border for maybe where some uh, hostas, some plants, some bushes, and trees would go in your yard. But The downside to having these is my boys and our three dogs will often chase each other throughout the yard, especially now in summer when it's nice out, and sometimes they will run through that border where they're really not supposed to be and they'll maybe trip over one of these stones. They'll trip over one of these rocks. And it's very easy to do if you're running fast or you're not paying attention or, in this case, you're doing something wrong. And yet a stone can be something that's a good thing. It can be something that's solid. A lot of stones stacked on top of each other and and put together could make a very good foundation. And so what Peter is trying to tell us here is that you and I are like living stones. Well, if I ask the stone to move, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere unless I pick it up like I am right now and and I toss it. So what does he mean by living stones? It means that you and I, because of what Jesus has done for us, we get to do something pretty spectacular. Stones back in the early times in the Bible were put together, and then maybe an offering was placed on them. An offering was placed on them because the people needed someone to offer a sacrifice for their sins, and so the priest would do that because they weren't able to. Well, when Jesus came and and became that ultimate priest for you and I and died for my sins and for yours, those sacrifices didn't have to be done anymore. And so now Peter is saying, we get to be those living stones. You and I get to live a life where we, we lay aside the things that we want and maybe have a desire for, and we say, God, what do you want me to do? How can I be a living stone a living sacrifice and give you thanks for all that you've done for me and so therefore that's why he says you get to be a holy priesthood you get to be part of that built into that spiritual house you get to be a spiritual sacrifice and god finds that acceptable he finds that good for you and for me not because i've done a great job not because i've built these stones up well but because of what Jesus did for you and what Jesus did for me. And so those people who believe that and those of you who are watching are part of those believers because you believe that. And so that stone because becomes something very precious. But there are people, unfortunately, who decide that they don't want to believe that. They say, I'm going to reject that stone, which is Jesus, and then that stone becomes something that is almost like a stumbling block when we talked about how my boys maybe trip over it. I have a picture because it says a cornerstone. A cornerstone would be something that is really like the 
uh, it's like the solid part of a building. Now you see the one there, it says 2003, and so that would actually be the cornerstone for the church that I'm in. Maybe you've seen that in a church that you go to, you'll see the date on it. Now that cornerstone is kind of meant to hold up the whole building, so to speak. It's not really doing that, but a cornerstone years ago would be that foundation that would be placed into the corner of the building, and it really would give structure to that whole building. Nowadays, a cornerstone is really that main stone where the date of when that was built would be. And so the cornerstone is still very important. And what you see in that passage is those, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Jesus is our cornerstone. He's the rock that we base our faith on. And because of that faith he gives you and me, what a wonderful way for us to live, giving thanks to God. My prayer for you is that you know you are a chosen people. God chose you, and so now you get to be part of that holy priesthood, the people who love and give thanks and serve God as living stones. What a wonderful image Peter gives to you and I. Amen.